be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from the Dam Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings call or Carbon and Universal. We have the management today being represented by Mr. Sridharan Gangarajan, Managing Director, Mr. P. Patanavan, CFO, Mr. Sushil Vendale, CFO Designate, Mr. G. Sandrapoli, Advisor Investor Relations, and Mr. Dhanesh Kumar, Senior Manager Strategic Planning. I'll now hand over the floor to the management for their initial remarks, post which we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Good morning, Bhumika. I am Chandra Mohli. Uh, let us start the proceeding with a disclaimer class. Good morning. During this call, we may make certain statements which reflect our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement. These statements are based on management current expectation and are associated with uncertainties and risk are more fully detailed in our annual report, which may cause the actual result to differ. Hence, these statements must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. Thank you. Good. Good morning to all of you and uh, a very warm welcome to a fourth quarter and full year earnings call for the financial year FY24. Before I begin, I trust you and your family members are safe and healthy. Today, I'm joined uh, in the call with Mr. Padmanabhan, Mr. Sushil Bendale, Chandra Mowgli, and Mr. Dinesh. We will begin this call with providing an overview of the company's performance for the quarter, quarter four, and the full year, as well as an outlook for FY25. <clears throat> First, I will start with the consolidated business performance. Consolidated sales for FI24 were almost flat and grew at 0.6% to 4,628 crores. This means a growth rate of 2.7% in abrasives, 4.8% in ceramics, and electro minerals with a negative growth of 5.4%. But it's important to understand. VAW's performance here to appreciate this 4,628 crores, how it comes. VAW represents 19.4 percentage of the consolidated CUMI sales. VAW grew by 20.4 percent in FI24 in ruble terms. But when it gets translated into INR, it shows a degrowth of 9.5%. That's why it gets reflected both in consolidated total sales as well as in the electro mineral sales. During the last year, that is FI24, one, sorry, FI23, one ruble was converted into 1.23. Indian rupees. Whereas in FI24, one ruble is converted at 0.92 Indian rupees. Now, had the exchange rate remained the same, the overall growth of CUMI would have been 7% instead of 0.6% as we just mentioned. This also means a growth of 8.9% in electro minerals. 6.3 in ceramics and 5% in abrasives. Coming to quarterly performance, consolidated sales for Q4 FI24 was at 1,183 crores with a sequential growth of 4.7% and almost flat quarter over quarter. Sequential growth was contributed by growth of 15.5% in ceramics, a growth of 3.3% in electro minerals, and 0.8% growth in abrasives. 
now coming to pbit pbit for fi24 grew at 15.4% to rupees 625 crores with a pbit margin of 13.5% against 541 crores in fi23 with a pbit margin of 11.8% the pbit margin of 625 crores is the highest in the long term in the last 4 uh, 5 years if one looks at it this was contributed by brazil growth of 7 growth at 73% ceramic growth at 14% and a degrowth in electro minerals by 14% pbit for q4 fi24 <coughs> was at 171 crores with a pbit margin of 14.4% compared to pbit for q3 fi24 which was at 158 crores with pbit margin of 14% and pbit for q4 fi23 comparable last year quarter was at 157.5 crores <clears throat> with pbit margin of 13.3% so the growth is 8.3% sequentially and 8.6% quarter over quarter so we have uh, uh, a good growth at the pbit at uh, full year level and the q4 level now if i look at pad pad for fi24 grew at 11.4% to 461 crores there was a, an exceptional income of rupees 25 crores during a fi 23 which you would note that it was called out as exceptional income in the pnl phase itself if we exclude that profit after tax growth was 18.6% compared to last year pad for q4 fi 24 was at 134 crores 135 crores again 111 crores in q3 fi 24 that is the immediate preceding quarter and 137 crores comparable quarter last year which included a one time exception in come up 25 crores so if we exclude that as a significant growth which is what we just saw standalone standalone business grew by 4.9% to 2593 crores in a fi 24 compared to the last year the growth was majorly driven by ceramic segment at 5.6% wherein refractory grew at 13.5% electro mineral segment grew at 5.6% and abrasive segment grew at 3.9% on quarterly basis standalone grew by 4.4% to 656 crores in q4 of this year fi24 compared to last year q4 fi23 at 628 crores and sequential basis the growth was at 3.4% if we exclude one time exceptional income of rupees 25 crores in fi23 pbit for fi24 grew at 10.8% to 467 crores with pbit margin of 18% compared to pbit of the last year which was at 422 crores with a pbit margin of 17.1% the growth in pbit margin came from abrasives ceramics and a fall from electro minerals q4 fi24 pbit was rupees 124 crores which grew at 12.8% compared to q3 of fi24 and grew by 2% compared to the same quarter of the last year profit after tax for fi24 was at 350 crores this is an increase of 5.9% compared to fi23 pad for q424 was at 94 crores resulting in 17.6% growth compared to q3 fi24 and 17.4% degrowth compared to q4 fi23 which included one time exceptional income of 25 crores now i'll go to buy segment 
Abrasis, Abrasis consolidated revenue for FI24 was at 2,091 crores, which grew at 2.7% compared to the last year. The growth is 5%, excluding the growth is if it is equivalent to 5% if one excludes was exchange rate impact. The abrasives consolidated revenue for quarter grew 1.5% quarter over quarter to 533 crores and by 0.8% sequentially. On a full year basis, standard and abrasive was at 1,150 crores and grew by 3.9% compared to last year. Standalone abrasives grew by 4.2% to 292 crores quarter over quarter and 0.5% sequentially. VAW, uh, on full year basis, sales grew by 22% in ruble terms. However, in INR, this resulted in a decrease of 8%. During FI23, ruble to INR was converted at 1.23, which I just said, whereas in current year, it is converted at 0.92. Quarter over quarter, the growth in ruble was almost good at 14%. Exchange rate in Q4-24 was 0.91 against 1.12 of the Q4 of the last year. Now I'll move to Rodius. Rodius in Q4 achieved a net sales of 17 million euro compared to 15.5 million in Q3 of FI24 and 17.4 million in Q4 of the last year. On a full year basis, sales do degrew by 2% to 63.3 million euro from 64.5 million euro during the last year. Coming to the bottom line performance, I'm happy to share that Rodi has made a profit of 0.6 million in Q4 FI23, including the PPA write-off. On full year basis, the loss after tax was 1.5 million euro against the loss of 3.7 million during the last year. This is what we have been communicating that they would come down. The interesting point to note here is that if we exclude the PPA write-off of 2.8 million on a full year basis, Rodius made a profit before tax of 1 million euro in FI24 itself. Avuko, coming to Avuko's performance on a full year basis, we achieved 9.13 million sales, which is 3% lower compared to last year. And losses after tax at 2.3 million against 3.7 million during the last year. The sales for the quarter grew by 19% to 2.55 million against Q3 FI24 and 2.6 million in Q4 of the last year. The loss after tax for the quarter was at 0.4 million against the loss of 1.2 million in the same quarter last year. We expect Avoco to break even at the EBITDA level in FI25 and a small loss of 0.7 million to 1 million in, in FI25. Avoco, uh, sorry, America, we, which grew at 8% which on a full year basis has done well. Standalone abrasives on a full year basis grew 3.9% to 1,150 crores compared to last year. All three segments, industrial, precision, and retail, had a single digit growth with volume growth in industrial and precision, whereas the volume de grew in retail segment, which was and the impact which we have been talking to you for quite some time. Coming to the bottom line performance of the segment, the consolidated abrasives PBAT on full year basis was at 182 crores compared to 105 crores result in a margin improvement from 5.1% to 8.7%. So this is the consolidated PBAT margin. This was mainly due to better performance in standalone, Rodius, and Avuco. On a full year basis, the standalone margin has improved significantly to 17% compared to 
7% during the last year, mainly on account of the product mix. This is the standalone product mix. Of, hence, we could not get the benefit of increased volume in sales. VAW, I will cover the performance of VAW. On a full year basis, sales grew by 20% to ruble 9.7 billion. This is a, a better performance in ruble terms. The operations are running well. There has been an increase in sales volume compared to the last year in all three segments, silicon carbide, abrasives, and refractories. In FI23, ruble was converted uh, on an average Indian rupees at 1.23, whereas in FI24, it is converted to 0.92. This conversion resulted in a degrowth of 5.4% as a consolidated revenue in Indian rupees compared to FI23. On a full year basis, the profits increased significantly to 1.6 billion ruble compared to 1.2 billion ruble of the same period last year. Sales for Q4, FI24 in local currency grew to 2.3 billion compared to Q4-23. They delivered a profit of 384 million ruble in Q4 against 349 million during the same period last year. Capacity utilization is very good. On a full year basis, the product mix towards Russia sales uh, increased to 59% compared to last year, 57%. And the pre-conflict uh, time was 45%. They continue to be debt-free and outlook remains stable and positive. I'll move to Fasker Zirconia. On a full year basis, Fasker had a lower sales in volume to the extent of 16%, which we communicated earlier largely three customers postponed the order. They had an impact in Q2 and Q3 of their quarters, and uh, Q1 was uh, around 1,000 tons. Q Four also was at 1,000 tons, which is a good sign. So, which means two out of the four quarters they did well, but the two quarters which they could not do really impacted them. This was possible with increased uh, offtakes, which is what is happening in Q4. We expect this momentum to continue in FI25. So, we feel that the FI25 will be a better performance than FI24. Coming to the bottom line performance of the segment on a full year basis, PBAD was 237 crores compared to 275 crores in the last year. Uh, this is a degrowth of 13.8%. This is due to impact of 28 crores standalone and 20 crores in Fosca On For the quarter, PBAD at consolidated level was 51.6 crores again 50 crores in Q3 of current year and 65 crores in Q4 of the last financial year. This I am covering the entire electro mineral section. Now I will move to the ceramics. Uh, consolidated ceramics on full year basis for FI24 grew by 4.8% to 1077 crores. In Q4, FI24, sales of ceramics was at 281 crores against 243 crores in Q3, FI24, and 265 crores in Q4, FI23. Standalone ceramics for FI24 grew by 5.6% to 881 crores compared to 834 crores during the last year. Refractory, wear ceramics, metallized cylinders grew at uh, high teens on a full year basis, but uh, with the degrowth in engineered ceramic, the overall segment resulted in a 5.6% growth. We expect this will get uh, better in uh, FI25, which I will cover later. In Q4 FI24, sales of ceramic was at 220 crores against 211 crores in Q4 FI23 and 213 crores in FI24. Subsidies in Australia and America registered a mid teens growth. Coming to the bottom line performance of the segment on a full year basis, consolidated PBAT was 
286 crores with a growth of 13.9% compared to the last year. All companies in the segment contributed a margin improvement. Now I request, uh, so the PBAT margin is improved from 24.4% to 26.5% on a full year basis. I will request uh, Padmanabhan to cover the PBAT margin, debt positions, capex, cash flow, and return on capital employed. And thank you. Consolidated on a full year basis, the PBAT margin uh, is at 13.5% uh, in the current year compared to 11.8% during last year. This is due to better performance in abrasives and ceramics. Abrasives margin improved from 5.1% to 8.7% and ceramics margins improved from 24.4% to 26.5%. PBAT margin at consolidated level for Q4 FI24 was at 14.4% compared to 14% in Q3 FI24 and 13.3% in Q4 of last year. Standalone on full year basis, standalone PBAT margin is at 18% in the current year compared to 17.1% during last year, excluding one-time exceptional income of 25 crores. A drop in margins is coming mainly from electromineral segment. Its PBAT margins dropped from 14% to 9.5%. Other two segments did better than last year. Abrasives margin improved from 13.7% to 17%, and ceramics margins improved from 246 to 25.1%. PBAT margin for the quarter improved from 17.4 in Q3 of FI24 to 18.9 in Q4. Abrasives on a full year basis consolidated PBAT margins improved from 5.1 to 8.7 percent, mainly contributed by standalone abrasive business, its margin increasing from 13.7 to 17 percent, and losses uh, coming down in Rodius and Avuco. At consolidated level, PBAT margins for the quarter improved from 7.3 percent in Q4 FI23 to 11.9 percent in Q4 of FI24. Also improved by 237 basis points sequentially. This was due to increase in the margins of standalone abrasive business from 15.8 percent in Q4 of FI23 to 18.7 percent in Q4 of FI24. This is mainly on back of the better realizations and improved operational efficiencies. Standalone abrasive margins improved by 144 basis points sequentially as well. In respect of the electro minerals, on a full year basis, the PVAT margins has decreased from 16.9% during last year to 15.4% in the current financial year. This drop is a result of standalone business and the South African subsidiaries performance. The margins of standalone business dropped from 14 to 9.5%. On full year basis, volume growth in aluminas has been good and SIC volumes were marginally better than last year. But price realizations were impacted due to dumping by Chinese producers. This resulted in drop in PBAT to the extent of 28 crores. PBAT margins at consolidated level for Q4 uh, current year was at 13.6% at the same level of Q3 of the current year. Quarter on quarter, it dropped by 245 basis points. The margins of standalone business dropped from 7.8% in Q3 to 6.2% in Q4 and by 119 basis points quarter on quarter. The drop in margins is mainly due to lower price realization despite securing higher volumes. In respect of ceramics, the consolidated PBAT margins improved from 24.4% to 26.5%. And standalone margins increased from 24.6 to 25.1 percent. All three subsidiaries, Kimi America, Kimi Australia, and War Russia, had better margins than last year. At consolidated level, PBAT margins for the quarter improved from 23.2 percent in Q4 to 25.2 percent in Q4 of the current year, and improved by 50 basis points sequen sequentially. The margins of standalone business dropped from 23.7% in last quarter to 23.5% in Q4 of the current uh, current year and by 73 basis points quarter on quarter, mainly on account of mix between the industrial ceramics and refractories and product mix within the industrial ceramics. 
the debt position there was uh, no debt at the stand alone books and the total debt at the consolidated level was at 113 crores at the end of fi24 compared to 230 crores at the end of fi23 the debt to equity ratio was at 0 0.04 at consolidated level cash and cash equivalent net of borrowings was 442 crores against 166 crores at the end of last year in respect of the capex on full year basis we did capex investment of 219 crores at the consolidated level cash flow or free cash flows on full year basis for fi24 at consolidated level is at 86 percent of pat compared to 33 percentage of pat during last year at standalone level it is 90 percentage of the pat compared to 60 percentage of pat during last year this is mainly on account of significantly higher net cash inflow from operations and better working capital management compared to last year the return on capital employed on full year basis at consolidated level is at 18.5 percent compared to 17 percent during last year at standalone level it is at 20.3 percent compared to 20 percentage in last year on y on y for consolidated basis the return on capital employed for ceramics has improved from 42.4 to 46.9 for abrasive it has improved from 7.8 percent to 13.1 percent and for electro minerals it has decreased from 29.9 to 26.7 for standalone businesses the return on capital employed for ceramics has improved from 48.3 to 52.2 percent for abrasive it has improved from 40.9 percent to 44.2 percent but for electro minerals it has decreased from 38.9 to 26.2 percent unallocable expenses in at the standalone level in fi24 is at 19.8 crores while in fi23 unallocable expenses was 32.77 crores the expense is lower by 12.9495 crores this is mainly due to higher dividend income in fi24 compared to q3 of fi24 the expenses in q4 of fi24 are lower rupees 10.56 crores due to higher dividend income similarly compared to q4 of last year the expenses are higher by 4.96 crores primarily due to higher professional fee spend consolidated the unallocable expenses at the consolidated level for fi24 was at 57.6 crores while in fi23 unallocable expense was at 72 crores primarily due to the withholding tax related to wa in fi23 and lower professional fees in fi24 unallocable expenses was higher by 4.13 crore quarter on quarter and sequentially it was higher by 8.9 crore primarily due to the exchange losses in the current quarter and the professional uh, fee spend now i request mr sridhar to take you through the next section related to future outlook okay, thank you um, i'll cover about the fi25 what we are looking at the indian economy continues to remain resilient against the challenging global environment. The medium term outlook is positive. We are cautiously positive about the key geographies and sectors in which we operate. In this background, we expect the full year consolidated sales growth could be 9% to 11% on a stable currency basis. We expect the consolidated sales could be 5,100 crores to 5,200 crores. We expect the growth in abrasives around 11 to 12 percent, ceramics 12 to 14 percent, and electro minerals 5 to 6 percent. Abrasive growth would be driven by three elements India abrasives, Rhodius, and AUCO. India abrasives growth would be 9% to 11%. The key drivers of the growth would be go-to-market expansion for retail and mass industrial products with specific three focus areas. Basically, increase the, our work in East and North where we need to scale up our presence and do that. Building the reach in wide spaces of West and parts of North who focus on demand generation. 
structured key account management all these will go to help the go to market expansion and multiple npd currently in pipeline will hit the market across the retail industrial by mid of financial year this should also help the increase in select segments introduction of new products in market via traded route to match the cost especially some value added segments which we need to really focus on dedicated focus on pushing new categories like cutting blades in non south markets focus of key account management for top 50 position customers these areas the strategic initiative that we are looking at will help us to grow in the abrasives in standard of rodius we are targeting is worth of 10% roughly about uh, 5 million to 7 million euro moderate economic activity recovery in germany and other european countries coupled with demand pick up in private label business would help to get the 10% growth these are numbers which they have done in the past 2022 like that avuko we are targeting a growth of 8 million to 10 million our team has done an extensive market sizing reaching out to key customers who have moved away from before during the last 4 to 5 years before uh, take over of kimi the key drivers of growth would be one focus on wood and leather industry to get back star customers the list of 70 customers we have made where we have uh, worked supplied in the past but they are not uh, dealing with us currently three overall reduction of lead time these three focus areas will help us to get the higher volume that we are targeting our industrial ceramics the growth rates are india and america are the two key drivers australia will be marginal growth we expect the growth to be 13% to 15% we expect all three sub segments of industrial ceramics where metallized cylinders engineer ceramics will do well growth drivers include medium voltage cnd industry pick up mobility high speed drive mines minerals defense sector will be the growth drivers for industrial ceramics refractory we expect the growth to be 12 to 13% the drivers of growth would be a global go global in glass super alloys chemical processing industry in north america europe and mina region market opportunity in iron and steel cement carbon black electro minerals it would consist of growth in india and phosphorus zirconia as far as wa we are planning similar performance as that of the last year Phosphorus zirconia. The reason for the growth, as I said, that they missed uh, two quarters in the last year, below 1,000 tons of run rate. We have reorganized the marketing, reaching out to all customers who sold in higher demand in Q4. They started participating in exhibitions, etc. The run rate is 1,000 tons in Q4. We expect this to continue in FI 25. As far as India, the volume growth was good in FI 24 itself. and we expect this would continue we are also expecting a stable price environment we had a steep price impact last time which was about 70% we expect a growth of 10% in india the demand drivers are for the performance of the refractive and abrasive industries in fi 24 we delivered a pvat margin of 13.5% at consolidated level we expect in fi 25 this could improve by 20 to 30 basis point the braces in fi 23 it was 5.1% move to 8.7% in fi 24 we expect that it could improve another 100 basis point in fi 25 ceramics fi 23 it was 24.4% move to 26.5% we expect a similar performance in fi 25 Yes, Electro minerals in FI 23 it was 16.9 percent, went down to 15.4 percent. We expect 20 to 30 basis point improvement in FI 25. Capex we have spent on an average 195 crores annually in the last five years. In FI 23 we spent around 219 crores. 
In FI25, we are expecting a spend of 350 crores. We acquired the assets of Dronco, Germany in FI24. We acquired the brand and technology of uh, Dronco. We, we have moved the assets into India. We are setting up this facility in India. It will take two years for us to set up this uh, facility. Similarly, we are setting up a six tons per month high purity silicon carbide facility. This will take about 18 months. We are also planning IT infrastructure and safety related capex. Now I'd like to close my opening remark with a summary. In standalone business, good volume growth in electromineral business, vast ceramics, metallized cylinders, refractories, corrosion resistance products. In abrasives, good volume is there in industrial and precision. We face price pressure in EMD business due to China dumping. We have challenge in abrasive retail market. There were some challenges in engineered ceramics during the last three, four quarters, but we, we are getting back on track. VAW Russia is doing well given the difficult conditions. South Africa business was impacted in Q2 and Q3, but now better shape. We are expecting a similar performance as that of Q4 continuing in FI25. Rodius delivered a profit in Q4 FI24, and we are expecting same momentum in the coming quarters. Losses in Aoko are lowering, and we expect we have a planned break even at the EBITDA level in FI25. Kimi America and Australia are doing well, plus yeah. loss is coming down and will break even in FI25. Yeah. Free cash flow to PAT is very good at 86%. The company continues to be debt free. In the meantime, we have also done strengthened the leadership team in the last nine months. Adrian Ganson joined as CEO at Rodius. Marcus Massa has joined as CFO at Rodius and Aoko. Trishil Bendela has joined as CFO. Ajit Kole has joined as IT head. Ram Mohan has joined as CHS head. Padmanabhan will take over as CRO and global taxation head. Sham Raman will become the uh, Chief Human Resources Officer, Srikant will be heading the abrasive business. So this has strengthened the leadership team, both at the global as well as strengthening the leadership team at my level. So we have created a good base. The business is in good conditions. We have also equally worked on the future, which I think we will share this in a year's time as we progress on that. With that, I will complete the opening remarks and I will open up for your q and Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use hands while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amit Anwani from PL Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on uh, uh, the uh, improvement in Rodius and Avuku. Uh, uh, I remember last quarter uh, we actually slashed the volumes. Uh, number there and uh, kind of uh, flattish uh, guidance there. So just wanted to understand how is the uh, capacity utilization which is shaping up uh, in these two businesses and uh, is our strategy on track. Uh, I remember when we acquired, we talked about uh, cross-selling products. We talked about bringing technology here and raw materials from India to, to supply to these subsidiaries. And the uh, third thing we wanted to understand what kind of volume growth we are factoring in uh, for the 525 and what actually uh, very specifically led to the uh, decline uh, in the losses uh, for 4Q. Yeah, no, thank you, Amit, for your set of questions. Um, I think when we talked last time itself, we have gathered that. Uh, Rodius uh, may lower the losses than expected. This was the 
guidance that I shared last time, and that is uh, how they are also performing. And uh, of course, loss are also coming down. This is what we communicated. As I said, that uh, we expect a 10% growth in Rodius. Uh, and uh, a substantial growth. You know, it's not right to consider growth of 60-50% because it may look so uh, absurd for this one, but they have been growing at about 8 to 9 million euro this year. And they can have a potential of getting to say 30 million euro. So we are looking at getting to about 17 to 18 million euro this year. As I said, the strategy is to focus on wood and uh, leather. Second is to get back to the 70 customers with whom we have dealt in the past, but they have moved away from Avuko because of their uh, challenges that the Avuko went through before our acquisition. Those customers we have reached out and we will be in a position to get back to them, strengthening of the marketing team, etc., And the focus on um, reducing the lead time, which was uh, one of the major costs people have shifted. So we feel that these will help the, help us to get back to uh, a normal fee. And I think uh, as far as the synergy goes, I think I just shared with you is that we are trying to <clears throat> set up uh, a 50 million uh, thin wheel capacity which we acquired from a company called Droneco, which is similar to Rodius um, in, in Germany, which went bankrupt, but we did not acquire the company. We acquired the assets, technology, and brand. We moved these assets uh, as we speak uh, in the last month, and that we will start uh, setting this up using the Rodius technology. That is how the synergies will start playing out. So how was the capacity utilization, sir, in these two subsidiaries? We have enough capacity uh, to utilize. Sure. Uh, second question on ceramics business. You highlighted that uh, we witnessed a high team growth for VO ceramics and net cylinder. And uh, there were some uh, issues, I think, the uh, lesser customer offtake for engineered ceramics. And this year we are guiding for almost, uh, I think, 13, 14% offline growth. So what kind of volume growth we are factoring in for ceramics in all these three, four sub-segments? I don't want to get into the specifics of volume and price. Uh, probably I would stay with whatever I gated there. But I think uh, in the engineered ceramic space, we are getting back to uh, normalcy. That is what I expected. There was a drop last year because of one customer's delay. We are assuming that customer order will continue to be the same, right? And that is the basic assumption. On top of that, we have confidence in getting the growth there on because of some specific work that we have done in the last 18 months to get back to other areas, uh, be it in devices and higher cylinder uh, production as well as in terms of the defense. This will help us to get back to higher volumes in engineered ceramics. Where ceramics and metallized cylinders are doing fine in the past and will continue to do also well uh, in FI-25. So lastly, sir, uh, amid the geopolitical situation, any disruptions we are facing with respect to uh, supply to any area? Uh, uh, that is my last question. Um, I'm not sure which political disturbance you are telling. There are all around so many political disturbances everywhere happening. Uh, but I think uh, we are continuing to navigate our business in compliance with many things. And uh, we haven't... Uh, there are delays because of, you know, this uh, Israeli conflict and which I think every industry these days are facing. There is also an increase in logistics cost due to that. So those are, uh, I would say, that every industry, every business is facing today. And everyone is trying to find 
the best possible alternative to overcome that. So we also continue to do that. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thanks for answering the questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sagar Gandhi from Invesco Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, am I audible? You are, you are audible, Sagar. Yeah, uh, sir, my question is on uh, this acquisition process which you mentioned. But can you please highlight uh, what is the peak revenue that this company has done over the last five years? And if you can give some more details on this acquisition. No, so, first of all, I want to clarify this is not an acquisition of a company. This yeah. is an acquisition of an asset, right? Yeah. It has a capacity of 50 million uh, thin meal can be produced, and uh, we expect this could give about 250 to 300 crores of top line. 250 crores of uh, top line in rupee terms? Yes. From uh, FI25 onwards? I wish we have a magic wand to put uh, all capacities just like that, but I, I told it will take 18 months to set up this uh, facility itself. So I would expect this would start flowing in from FI 27 and probably late 26 onwards. Okay, and sir, uh, margin profile, uh, any any there? Uh, I would not uh, guess at this stage. Uh, oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for giving me question. So, first question is, uh, Abdulatul growth... Uh, Ravi, sir, we're not able to hear you clearly. Uh, I think you are on a speaker, Ravi. You can probably yes. come out of the speaker, yeah. Sure. Is it better now, sir? Yeah, far better. Yeah. Uh, so, with respect to the abrasive business standalone, uh, past couple of years it has been in the four to five percent range. Uh, so, is it like uh, uh, the growth uh, would have been slower because of industry growing and uh, competition being higher, or the entire industry itself being slow growth? If you can throw more light on the industry growing. Yeah, thank you, Swaminathan. We have clarified this question earlier calls also, is that industry has been growing well. No issues on the industry growth. It is it's just that, you know, we could not capture certain uh, market share. This is what is our <clears throat> thing. And uh, I have a feel that uh, uh, it's largely a question of uh, in select products, select region, uh, you know, there are competition which have taken market share than us. Um, more competition than organized competition like us. So there are definitely people who have, uh, you know, either imported products and started selling uh, or uh, light manufacturing and started selling is what has taken uh, place. Okay, and uh, this year the margins were very good at 17%. Uh, is that kind of sustainable at an EBIT level, I'm asking, with respect to the standalone operational business? Yeah, so this is a combination of many things as I described in my opening remark. Large, lot of that is a function of uh, soft, uh, you know, commodity prices happening. So I would the expect there could be a small uh, dip um, i would say we should get we should be able to maintain that but subject to many other things that would happen in in this field so you should factor in you know a 50 bips uh, dip to a 20 bips uh, pickup understood thanks a lot thank you thank you Thank you. Next question is from the line of Harshit Patel from Equira Security. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. So I missed your comment on uh, setting up the high priority silicon carbide facility. If you could elaborate on this one. Yeah, I think uh, this facility um, is uh, set up in Kerala. We will uh, so two markets. One is market is for 
serving the semiconductor industry where the high purity silicon carbide will be used second is in the technical ceramics uh, field so these are the two uh, field that we will be addressing the capacity is uh, six tons per month um, capacity is what we are setting this up of course we will scale up depending on how uh, it would uh, uh, okay, getting the capacity utilization we will scale this up we expect 18 months to set this up yeah, what kind of capex it would require setting up these six tons per month so I don't want to share an exact capex one. It is part of the number that we shared already as overall capex uh, number uh, at this point. Yeah. Understood. So just a small follow up to that. So what kind of realizations these high priority silicon carbide would have? Would it be 10 times, 20 times, or maybe 50 times of what the commodity silicon carbide that we are selling? So is this the right ballpark or it would be different than this? I think uh, at least say 20, 25 times uh, higher than the current uh, realization. I would, I would wait to share many things on this. Step one is from a lab, we have moved to establishing a plant. That's the first step. We are confident of setting this up. We are confident of establishing this product uh, because you supplied few from the lab uh, level itself. So now we will have to then work in terms of getting to the next level, set this up, start uh, working with the customers, and then we will share more details at that point. Understood. My second question is on Avuco and Rodius. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that the Rodius sales declined by 2% in FI24 and Avuco declined by close to 3%. Now, uh, uh, what was the volume growth? I believe the prices would have declined. Uh, uh, so, uh, I believe the prices would have grown significantly. So, the volumes must have declined at least in high single digits. So, if you could give some flavor on the same. Uh, see, honestly, you know, Gauko and all, it is too heavy to look at price, volume, etc. We, are, as I said, we have enough and more to do there. I would rather focus in terms of increasing from the current nine million, you know, to the next year about seventeen to eighteen million. That's step one. That should be our focus. Rudy is also is that these are blips that happen based on the you know current demand supply situation. We are getting back to 10% growth, which is more or less they are what they have done in 2022 or so. So it is very much doable, and uh, I would uh, wait to focus on price volume analysis on a company like this. So just uh, lastly, on the uh, standalone electro minerals business, we have seen the deterioration in the margins uh, in the last two to three quarters because of the Chinese dumping. So what are the steps we are taking to arrest this decline in the margins? And what could be the sustainable margins in this segment going forward? That would be my last question. So I think uh, the electro mineral margin uh, this year we did about 9.5% standalone, right? Uh, and last year we were at 14%. I would uh, like to think maintaining in the range of 9, 9.5 is possible and it should improve as this uh, dumping will start reversing. And I, I, I think we'll have to give some more quarters before this stops. Um, there are quite a few steps that we are looking at in terms of bringing our costs down, both in terms of productivity, sourcing, and energy cost uh, reduction. So these are the measures that we are trying to counter that. Uh, but I think uh, in the initial phase, um, we are also parallelly trying to work with the government in terms of uh, explaining to them to look at this um, anti-dumping measures, but it's a lengthy process, but I think these are the steps that we are taking. Understood. Thank you very much for answering my questions and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
Next question is from the line of Saif Saurabh Gujar from ICIC Prudential AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Just on the Russian subsidiary VAW, uh, can you just repeat the PAT amount in rubles and what would be in INR terms and how much of that we have utilized say, for dividend taken to the standalone entity and reinvestment out of that, sir? Uh, we said that uh, one profit increased significantly to 1.6 billion uh, rubles. So it's roughly about 145 to 150 crores. And uh, we have uh, a policy of taking one third of this as a profit dividend, which will come to our uh, holding company, not to the standalone. But it will eventually flow to the standalone, right? So, what I'm trying to understand on the cash flow part, uh, there is no. That, that will get used to for servicing our debt. Uh, for acquisition, etc., which we have already completed. That's why we said that all the debts are paid. Now we have an opportunity to reuse this for various purposes, including repatriating back to India. Okay. So, and uh, my second question is on the uh, dumping part, but on the abrasive side. So similar thing, uh, just in terms of uh, like for abrasive, uh, for electro minerals, you talked about taking up with the government. Are similar actions possible on the abrasive side, or uh, these imports have been there always, so there is no scope there? No, no. I think uh, there are similar possibility exists in abrasives which we have done effectively along with uh, you know the people in the industry uh, while the ministry of uh, commerce recommended for a dumping ministry of finance did not agree to this uh, we have gone for uh, an appeal against that okay. thanks sir and all this. thank you thank you thank you Next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, on um, the uh, EMB segment now, uh, you know, on the standalone basis, we are broadly around 20-25% is a specialty EMB. Um, how do you see that changing over the next three, four years as this uh, high-priority silicon uh, facility is commissioned? Um, I think I just want to clarify a few things, which I will do now, is that we are at about 11 to 12 percent is our special, uh, specialty uh, material compared to the regular one. That's number one. It's not at 25 percent. Okay. The second is that our aim, yes, this we will increase this to we are expecting by 2030 we will get to 75-25. Is what is our current uh, program that we will take us? Understood. So, so when this shift happens, where uh, you will probably, as you said, from 10 percent move towards 25 uh, percent kind of a specialty business, yes. how then the margin profile shifts? Will it remain around this 9-10 percent kind of a range, um, or do you think it will settle more towards 14-15 uh, percent, um, um, you know, per se? Yeah. So let, let me give a color. So the core product that we are talking is WFA, brown fuse, semi-friable silicon carbide is the, our core product. Sure. The specialties that we are looking at is alumina, zirconia, zirmol, uh, <clears throat> thermal spray powders, sol gel, hmm. zirconia are the specialty one. And the transformational, which is HPSIC and graphene and silicon nitrate. These are the three that we are looking at as a transformation. So let's put these two together as core and speciality in a very simplistic sense, right? 
So we expect this uh, would take the contributions up at least by 10 to 15 percent higher is what is our expectation in this mixed change. Uh, because you will move from currently, let's say, 89.11 to 75.25 in this mix. So definitely the PBIT profile would go up. Now, I don't want to hazard a guess at this point, but I think it would definitely give a, a greater push in terms of moving the PBIT margin up. Understood. So similarly, in terms of high priority silicon, we were also looking at launching this product in Russia. So uh, uh, is that also being set up in Russia? Where the existing facility is being shifted towards that? Are we looking at adding capacity there? Because Russia also is running at a fairly high utilization. Um, so would it be more of a value growth out there with a very small marginal volume growth? Uh, and if you can just touch upon the high priority in that market as well. So right now our focus is set this up in Cochin. We are not looking at setting up this in Russia. Um, so that's the point one I want to clarify. We want to get some stability there geopolitical wise before we get to further uh, investments there. Okay, okay. And, and from a uh, war perspective, what will drive growth? Uh, because, I mean, uh, utilizations are already very high. Uh, so can we expect like a, you know, 10, 15 percent kind of growth possible out there? Or will it be more subdued because of the higher utilization? It will be more subdued because of high utilization. As I said that we are taking... Uh, you know, very, very 2 to 3 percent growth rate under the current circumstances. It, it's not right to uh, go anything beyond at this point in time. Let's look at it, how the things change, uh, you know, based on that, we can do that. There are pa packets of growth possible, higher refractory growth, higher abrasives uh, growth in VAW, which mm. definitely we are working on. And uh, those can give us some uh, you know, headroom, and also the relationship between India and Russia in terms of making use of their refractory products into India, we are strongly exploring that. That is another area of growth that we are looking at. Okay, okay. So, and just one last thing on the high priority silicon in India, you said that you know, it's moving from uh, the lab basis to the plant aspect of it. Do we have some uh, client tie-ups out here or anchor clients for our offtake once a plant is operational, say, 18 odd months later? Yes, yes. That's a good okay. question. We have clearly a anchor customer in, in silicon carbide for, um, uh, you know, for our ceramic business because they will get, get into preparing themselves into serving uh, semiconductor-based uh, ceramics, defense side of ceramics, electro electronic-based ceramics, all these will require the HPSIC material. And that is what uh, they would get into that. So clearly these two capacities are tied up and that is for a clear anchor customer within us, we will have that. Now outside of the anchor customer for the semiconductor use, we will start. We have just seeding this, supplying to few customers to for them to use the product and uh, accept this, which will take time. But definitely, we have more than 50 percentage of the production. We will have a internal tie-up. Got it. Got it. Great. So I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Alok Ranjan from 361 Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, first question is, uh, if you can help me understand, what is the power transmission exposure uh, as an end segment uh, from our ceramics business? So the power transmission exposure for ceramics uh, segment, my guess is about, uh, say, 
18 to 20 percent. And uh, sir, given the uh, commentary, which is uh, uh, not only restricted to India, but on a global uh, level also, uh, can we assume that although we have guided for the ceramics business growth to be in the range of 12 to 14 percent, but this must be growing at a rate higher than 20, 25 percent? Yes, I think uh, th there are sub-segments, which I think uh, metallized cylinders, which uses, uh, goes into the medium voltage, which is what I also mentioned, is, is on a higher project. I agree. Got it. And sir, uh, second question, uh, if you can help me understand regarding this high purities of, you know, silicon carbide, uh, can you just help me understand the value chain, like who will be the customer for us? And also, uh, given the kind of, you know, uh, semiconductor related capex being announced by Tata in terms of 50,000 wafers capacity, uh, what could be the other opportunity which uh, Carborandum can think to participate? So, um, the high purity silicon carbide would get used, as I said, we are looking at two broad areas of uh, application. One is in the semiconductor, the other one is in the technical ceramics. Uh, technical ceramics is basically, uh, as I said, ceramics that would get used in um, semiconductor equipments, which is a very large space which we can look at it. The second area is in the electronics, EV vehicles, um, and also the areas of defense. All these areas would require uh, high purity silicon carbide, largely on the industrial ceramics application is concerned. The second application goes is in the in in uh, silicon carbide based wafer manufacturers would require the HPSIC material. So these are the two sets of things. As far as the Tata uh, semiconductor that you are just mentioned, that they are based on silicon-based uh, um, semiconductor fabs. Got it. Got it. Also, uh, just one clarification here: given that we are putting up a capacity closer to six tons per month, uh, what could be the typical size of, of a global market and whether this capacity is initially to start with since we are moving from lab to plant to scale and in terms of the runway, uh, it could be much, much higher. How do you think about it, sir, the growth journey here? Uh, so uh, I think uh, the growth journey, uh, we are putting up a reasonable capacity because it extends per month. So definitely it is a uh, decent capacity. Um, headrooms are definitely there. Uh, as we, after establishing, it will definitely will be in a position to take a relook at this. Um, second is that we have to focus, as I said, we are just not focusing only on the semiconductor. We are also focused on the uh, ceramic application, which I think, since it's going to be integrated into our own value chain, we'll be more keen to look at it that way. Got it. So last question, um, we are saying commodity, uh, commodities are moving up again. Uh, so like alumina prices have moved up from $378 kind of per ton to more than, you know, 400. So it's around 8% sharp move that we are seeing. How does that impact our electro minerals business, uh, uh, this, this movement which uh, we have seen in alumina? Uh, it's difficult to directly correlate on the alumina site, alumina movement exactly, but definitely it will have an impact into our own input material cost. So it has to be uh, worked in terms of passing on the cost. Those aspects will start uh, flowing through. Got it, sir. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bhavan Vitalani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and uh, congratulations for good set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavan. Uh, so actually, uh, first is some data-related uh, questions. I missed the uh, numbers of Ovoco and Rodius. If you could just help me with 
full year revenues uh, ebitda and pat for odis uh, that will be helpful and uh, the guidance that you gave of increment 8 9 million euro i just got a little confused you can help me again on the guidance front and we take my notes paper the Uh, so a uh, book or as i said i think uh, it's a full year 9.13 million sales and uh, the loss after taxes 2.3 million now this is last year's loss after tax was 3.7 million that is fy23 so uh, rodius uh, i mentioned uh, 63.3 million euro is the is the top line and uh, the full year basis the loss after tax was 1.5 million euro compared to 3.7 million euro of the last year fy23 Sure. So, in terms of guidance, what are we guiding individually on revenues and margins front for Voco and Rodius in 25? So, Rodius, I said uh, we will go by 10% more uh, higher growth, and we will make uh, a small profit, and Voco. Uh, we said that we will go up by 8 to 10 million euros than the current uh, numbers and uh, we are looking at an ebit uh, break even there uh, and uh, were these uh, uh, so was rodius uh, ebit up positive in 23 given that it was a small loss So no, no, EBITDA positive. Rodius is EBITDA positive. Yeah, and I said, in fact, uh, even at the current one, if I take the PPA out of 2.8 million, it it is equivalent to a profit of uh, 1 million euro at the PBT level. I understand. Uh, so the second question is on the uh, ceramics division, uh, wherein you. highlighted that the year gone by we had mid teens growth uh, in ware ceramic uh, and uh, re factories it's the engineered ceramic which declined uh, so what was the decline in the engineered ceramics last year and uh, going forward as the customer which postponed which you believe come back uh, and then uh, the growth that you are guiding for 11 to 13 uh seems uh, lower than you guided in the past calls of 20 to 25% growth you were anticipating for the ceramics division yeah so i think uh, we the sum of all, there are three sub segments in industrial ceramics bare engineered and metallized cylinders sum of all these three put together we are at flat compared to fy23 to 24 we are not sharing individually their uh, sub elements and their growth we feel that uh, uh, the engineered ceramics growth that we are looking at the next year considers a similar sales of last year from the customer that we had uh, shortfall and we have picked up higher sales on certain select segments like night vision lamps defense industry and few other uh, devices customers which helps us to get to the growth back so we are hence we are gaining a growth at this point in time uh, overall uh, a growth rate that we are looking at and uh, fire uh, so on the refractory again there are uh two broad sub segments which is basically so three broad broad segment fired monolithic and uh, uh composites put together these are the three sub segments there they have grown substantially well last year and we are expecting a similar performance to continue in the next year 
Uh, earlier, you were telling that you gated us uh, 20%. Now you are saying 13 to 15%. And uh, I expect, uh, I would like to be conservative here and uh, uh, and exceed rather than um, tell something and uh, come below that. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, just uh, one more question on uh, the SOFC customer where uh, there was a changeover in the model and, and hence there was a deferment of the seats. Uh, uh, are you getting, um, uh, I mean, is there something more uh, than just the changeover in the model where they are running off the older inventory, then uh, the demand impact uh, that your discussions with the customer suggest? And is that, uh, I mean, are you seeing that the growth can come back on a three year basis, We're not talking, we not uh, expecting on a one or two quarters that uh, we have expected earlier? Absolutely. I think uh, so. We told, I think, last call itself, I did clarify there is a model change, is one reason, the other one is the their uh, business in South Korea also went down and hence uh, it affected. They got back to the South Korea orders from Q4 of calendar year 25, which is what I did mention in the last call. So we feel that, as you rightly said, in a three-year time frame uh, to come, they will get back to higher growth rate. And I think it's a very strong customer. They are doing fine in their own business and they should get back. Just uh, so uh, um, the, on the uh, EMD and uh, high purity SICA, our capacity of six tons per month. Um, if you could just help us with what would it be versus the global demand? Uh, totally, I mean, just want to know what could be our share uh, in the market once our capacities get commissioned. Um, I think I tried to answer this in the earlier. Uh, question also is that <clears throat> see these are niche demands globally we feel that what we have kept as a capacity to start with is a decent capacity to get them and once you establish it will give us a reasonable uh, share so I feel that uh, we would be able to share this more once we establish start doing that we will be able to come back to you and share but I think is is a reasonable size to start at six times a month. Sure. Not, not so. I'm sorry to harp on this again. Would our capacity be like sub five percent of the world demand? I mean, we want to know the headroom uh, that uh, the kind of there will be enough headroom. <laughs> Great. Uh, just last part of it in the uh, EMD, historically we have been working on um, certain battery related uh, materials like graphene and high purity graphite. Uh, any uh, progress on that and um, if, if you could just give us some color on that would be helpful. Yeah, I think uh, in the last call I did clarify these two points very well and about our intentions etc. But to start with, let me um, get to the graphene again. And uh, see, I, I feel that uh, uh, we are focusing as far as graphene is concerned on three broad areas. And um, one is uh, in terms of auto detailing. The other one is the bio pack. The third one is the super capacitor application. Fourth and fifth work is on, which is on the cement and uh, tires, when you usually uh, going through the rubber mod. So these are the uh, five areas that we are looking at. Of this three, we will take it up, and that is how we are uh, getting to the next step. Uh, as far as the graphite is concerned, we have clarified in the last call is that it takes a long time. We need to establish our <laughs> synthetic graphite facility, which I think uh, will take time. I would uh, get back to you as and when we establish and uh, we have uh, a path forward, we will then share at this point in time. 
As I said, the HPSIC and graphene is the two, and these are the five areas that we will focus on graphene. Of these three, we have a, a clearly laid path which will take it forward. Sure, appreciate this. But last question, if I may. So, we have seen uh, the Pollution Control Board uh, uh, have laid uh, significant uh, uh, penalties on the tire companies, and that now there is a mandate for them to recycle. So. Uh, do we have any products or solutions uh, uh, which can help them uh, on on this recycle part? Yes, I think th th this is this is one area where we are focusing on is how by adding graphene we get back to the similar to virgin uh, rubber from a retraded or reused material is the work that currently we are working on. As we start establishing, as we start uh, progressing well technically, we have done technical work in terms of few uh, people, uh, you know, uh, associated with us and some universities outside of India uh, would, would get back to you in, in a specific one as and when we have a good, uh, you know, uh, path forward. But as I said, it's one of the five areas of our focus. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking my question. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Tarang Agarwal from Old Bridge AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon and thank you uh, for the opportunity. A couple of questions. Uh, one on the India business. Uh, you know, if I look at uh, FI24, the abrasives and the ceramics uh, segment has grown by about 4 to 5%, right? And uh, the outlook for FI25 seems to suggest that uh, you all are baking in anywhere between 10 to 12% uh, for the India business. Uh, are you seeing increased level of activity uh, overall uh, from a market perspective or do you think it's going to be a function of uh, you know everything that you mentioned so it'll be more micro rather than uh, market led and second uh, the 4 to 5% growth that we witnessed in FI24 uh, from a is there a way to probably uh, comment whether uh, you know we've lost market share or uh, you know where we are because that number seems to be a bit soft. And the third, uh, on uh, VAW, uh, what percentage of, uh, if you could give us a segmental split of VAW between electromineral, ceramics, and uh, uh, appraisers. Right. Thank you. I think, uh, uh, so as far as the growth for FI25 uh, is concerned, I think, uh, Let's split this into two elements, ceramics and abrasives, which is what your question is. So ceramics, I think, largely two broad components, industrial ceramic and refractory are the two sub-components in that. Refractory grew 20% plus, but we have a challenge on the industrial ceramics, which was a flat, largely because of engineered ceramic business, which we talked in few questions earlier and how we think that we will get back to higher growth rate we explained this uh, clearly so it is nothing to do with the market one like you know as you in your own words it's a micro management of the uh, business and we will get there so that is how the growth path of it's a five six percent this year to get at the higher percentage is, is the reason for ceramic size the abrasive, similar explanation. It is not uh, uh, the market, which is, I think, market is there, market is growing. Uh, in a way, you have mentioned that, uh, does it mean you have lost market share? Yes, in some specific pockets, yes, we have lost. We have to get back. That is the program that I described also what we will do in abrasives to get back this. Um, as far as... Uh, uh, VAW is concerned, it's predominantly an electromineral business. I would not like to share the individual segments, but this is the broad guidance I can give. Would it be fair to presume about 75 to 80% of VAW would be electrominerals? It's a predominantly electromineral business. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amar from Lucky Invest. Please go ahead. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. My question has been answered. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mohit Pandey from Macron Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, on the high quality silicon carbide, so firstly, we have missed this, but uh, what are the commissioning timelines for the plant being set up? Uh, and secondly, in earlier calls, I think you uh, used to mention about a uh, certain level of uh, purity that you are looking to achieve, like 99.9999. So is it fair to assume that that has been uh, achieved now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mohit. I think uh, <clears throat> we are looking at a phi and purity which we have uh, established. It would take 18 months to set up this plant. Okay, sir. And is this uh, work also ongoing on further uh, end levels of uh, purity uh, being targeted or? Uh... No, I think in this method of manufacturing, we have probably is the best. Understood, sir. Sir, and uh, secondly, on abrasive uh, domestic margins, uh, so are there, uh, apart from softer uh, raw material prices, uh, what would be the, you know, self health measures like uh, cost controls, et cetera, contributing to the margin expansion, if, uh, if you could give some sense around that uh, as well? Uh, yeah, I think there are three or four drivers which we described. One is the commodity. The other one is product mix. The third one is the cost uh, measures. And the fourth one is some of the price sell improvements that we put up in the select areas. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Rupanet for closing comments. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, um, thank you very much um, uh, for giving us an opportunity to host the call, sir. Uh, wishing you all the very best and thanks to all the participants. Sir, any closing remarks from your end, sir? I think uh, I, uh, first of all, thank uh, Dam Capital for hosting this uh, conference. I, I would like to uh, summarize and leave a few thoughts here is that we have uh, uh, quite a decent volume growth in most of the business segments that we have. And uh, we have clearly uh, done an excellent performance in terms of the profitability. The profit growth is very good. Fat ratio is at 10% plus. Cash conversion is good at, at that 86%, and it uh, continues to be a zero debt company. Good balance sheet, and uh, the companies that we acquired are started performing well, both at Rodius and Avuco. Uh, it is on the trajectory of the right group. We have uh, done uh, a good job in terms of reorganizing and strengthening the leadership team at uh, various levels. Uh, and we have uh, currently working on a long-term strategy and uh, a vision going up to 2030. So summary is that a good base business, uh, trajectory of growth identified, leadership team is in place. We're working towards getting to the next level of the growth path. So that's uh, probably the summary I would like to leave. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dam Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.